here in just a few days, we are approaching yet another big holiday, are we not? Another big holiday coming up. We are almost into a new year. Can I get an amen on that? 2021 is almost over. 2022, here we come, right? And the new year's coming, whether we are ready for it or not. But one thing, at the beginning of every year, one thing that a lot of people do as, as the, the year is ending and we know that the new year is, is approaching, one thing that I would say most people do is we take an evaluation of our life. We look at every area in our life and we're like, okay, where can we do better? Some of us set New Year resolutions, whether it's I want to start going to the gym or I want to start eating healthy or I really want to start pursuing this career choice or I want to start my own business or whatever it is, I want to leave a, a, more, a, a better impact on my family this coming up year. Whatever it is, we all just kind of, in a way, we step back and we just kind of look at the past 12 months of our life. Some of us, we ask these questions, are we on the right track for our life? This past, this past year, 2021, has been a difficult year for many people. How many of you would agree with that? That it's been a difficult year for many people. This year has brought happiness, it's brought joy, it's brought sadness, it's brought sorrow to so many different families. But yet, when we get to the end of the year, we all end up asking that question, God, Am I am where you want me to be, and am I doing what you want me to do? Have I done that this past year? If I haven't, God, what can I do? What do I need to change in order to make sure that I am doing what you want me to do? Some of us might ask the question, does my life matter? And one thing that we do is year after year goes by, and the next thing you know, it's another year that's gone by, and what ends up happening is you look over all the, all the years of these New Year resolutions. You know, the statistic is that 70, no, I'm sorry, 62% of people that make New Year resolutions, whatever it is, gym, food, business, whatever it is, 62% of them end up falling off of that wagon, let's just say, within the first two months of the year. That's huge. That is a massive, massive percentage of people that make some type of commitment, whether it's to the Lord or to themselves or to their families, and then within two months of the new year, they're walking away from their new commitment. I want us to, if you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn to Colossians chapter 1 before, as, as we're going through a couple more notes. But what is it, church, that you want to do with the one shot that you got? You know, I believe that a new year, it is God gracing us with a new year. You know, but it, it doesn't matter. It's, it's the same year. The clock does not tick any different when the new year comes. The days don't change. It's still 24 hours in a day. There's still 52 weeks in a year. Nothing changes with a new year as far as the calendar or the time or anything else. But what is it that you want to do with this one shot that you have, and that is life? What is it that you're wanting to do? Are you wanting to leave an impact? Are you wanting to leave a legacy behind? What is it that you are so desperately seeking to accomplish in your life? You see, we all have these passions we all have these ambitions of things that we want done in our life or things that we want to do. And we can basically translate this question into this, am I in God's will? How many of you maybe asked that question maybe this year? Am I in God's will? If we look at Colossians chapter 1, starting with verse 15, the verses will be on the screen if you need them. You might be asking before we read that, I don't know, how in the world do I know if I'm even in God's will for my life? And I pray that after this sermon, you'll be able to really understand what God's will is for your life. It's a very simple answer, but yet at times we enjoy complicating simple answers that God tells us in his word. Starting at verse 15, again, Colossians chapter 1, it says, He is the image of the invisible God, 
the firstborn of all creation. It says, for him all things were created. In heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him. What's it say? For him. So everything was created through Jesus, for Jesus. And he is before all things, and he, or in him, all things hold together. Can I get an amen on that? All things in the name of Jesus Christ, they hold together. And he is the head of the body, he is the head of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. So everything was made, was created through him, and created for him. There are a couple things here in this text that we just read that I want us to look at real quick. And the two things is is that we are here because of Jesus, for Jesus. When we ask ourselves, God, what is your will for my life? We need to remember that we are here because of Jesus, for Jesus. Primarily, we have been created for a person, which is God. Amen? God is the head of the church. And it's amazing how the songs all lined up about us you know, going to go tell it on the mountain and that his glory needs to be revealed to the earth. It's amazing how the songs are added up and lined up here with this message today. But to answer the big question that so many Christians have, we ask ourselves sometimes daily, sometimes weekly, sometimes monthly, maybe yearly, God, what is your will for my life? Paul tells us, and this is what it is. This is what the will of God is for your life. God's will for you is to know him and for you to make him known to the world. That is God's will for your life, is to know him and to make him known to the entire world. That is God's will for your life. When we understand that we were created, that we were made by him, meaning Jesus, we were created by him to pursue after him every single moment of our life. That is God's will for us. Some of you might say, well, Pastor Josh, that is a spiritual question, and I don't, want always, I don't always want a spiritual question. I need to know, am I at the right job, or am I dating the right person, or am I marrying the right person, or am I doing this correctly, or or am I doing that correctly? What happens if you find that job, or you find that person, but at the end of the day, you still don't know why you are here? You see, your will, your who you are, your calling is not wrapped up in another person. You cannot allow someone to dictate what your calling is and if you are standing in God's will or not. Now, does God use other people to confirm things? Yes, absolutely. But the only person that knows if you're standing in God's will is you and God. But so many people, they, they go ask people, hey, do you think I'm doing what God wants me to do? Do, do you really think, do you think I'm hearing from God? Do, do, you, think, do you think this or do you think that? What happens is the enemy at times, he tries to get us to second guess what we think God's will is for our life. Maybe we feel like we failed other people, or maybe this past year has just been a different year for so many, or, or a difficult year for so many people, and they've questioned, God, what is it that you have for me? And we all start asking these questions around maybe October, November. We kind of lose track of of the the calendar and the the questions and the goals that we set at the beginning of the year, normally two, definitely six months in, nine times out of ten, we've forgotten what we've even said that we want to do. Because we've got so focused on so many other things in this world, we've allowed so many things to distract us from what 
God wants for our life. And God's will for our life is simply to know him, to have a personal relationship with him, and to make him known to all of the world. That is the Great Commission, to go out and make him known into all of the world. That is his will for your life. But you see, God's will, it's not about an assignment. What it is, it's about a bigger picture that we call life. And for us, when we think about God's will, we immediately want to connect that with some type of vocation or some type of location. When we think of God's will, it's like, okay, God's will, that means I have to be, I have to either be a pastor or I have to be at a specific job or I have to be an elder or, or I have to be on the worship team or, or I have to be here or I have to be living here or I have to open up my business here or I got to do this or I got to do that. No, when we think of God's will, it's like, God, what is it that you want from me? And God would simply say, I need you to know me. I want you to know who I am as the high priest, as the Lamb of God, as the King. I need you to know me, and I need you to go out and tell everybody about me. That's what I need you to do. And going into the new year, church, God, every, every new year that comes along, I believe, like I said, even though the calendar doesn't change, the, the, the time doesn't change, days continue, the clock continues to tick, but when the new year comes, it's almost like a fresh start. Does it not feel like a fresh start? When you wake up on January 1st, you're like, oh, it's, like a, it's just like a, a breath of fresh air. It's just like, man, everything that I messed up in the year before is all wiped away, and I got a brand new year to get everything right. I know sometimes I feel that way. It's like, man, thank gosh it's a new year. I can reset goals. I can make up for the things that I didn't do the year past, and everything will be good. But let me ask you a question. How many of you made God known to other people? How many people has God placed in front of you? How many people has God given you the opportunity to make him known? And we might have missed that opportunity. You know, the greatest, the greatest gift of this world was when God sent his son. Right, we're celebrating Christmas. We just got done celebrating Christmas yesterday. For those of you that might have already forgot, because of the busyness, and sometimes it just feels like it doesn't even feel like Christmas because everyone's so busy and everyone's doing this and doing that. And the next thing you know, Christmas is over, and you wake up and it's the next day. But the greatest gift that we could ever give anybody else is the hope of Christ. I can't give you any other gift. You might open up, Jennifer, you might open up a Clemson shirt and be happy, right? So-and-so, Pastor Lay, he's not here, he's not feeling well this morning, but if I give him a Virginia Tech sweatshirt, he'd be happy. If I gave Pastor Brad a West Virginia shirt, he'd be happy. But is that the greatest gift I could ever give? You see, the things of this world, they're, they're here one day and they're gone the next. But yet so many of us, and guys, including myself, I don't... I don't sit here and, and remove myself from this conversation. Guys, we, we all at times lose focus on what life is truly about. Life isn't about who can get the most money or have the best house or ha what church can grow the biggest or, or which church has the best ministries and, and this church compete with that. No, it, it's what can we do to let people know who Jesus is. That's what it's about. It's about if we need to plant more churches so that the kingdom can grow, then we need to plant more churches so that Jesus can be spread to all of the world. But yet so many times we are so inwardly focused, like, okay, what, what is your will for me? I, I really think God's will for me is to go out and, and buy this house that we can't afford, or I think God's will for my life is to go out and do this or go out and do that. But simply God's will for you is just to know him just to know him, have that personal connection with him, and then take that personal relationship out and give people hope. You know, I've said this multiple times through the last couple years, and I asked the question, let me ask this question, I'll ask it again. How many of you know somebody who has passed away from cancer? 
All right? If you know somebody who's passed away from cancer, okay, basically almost every hand's up. How many of you know somebody right now battling cancer? You know somebody right now. It doesn't have to be family. It could be a friend of the friend of a friend, but you know of someone that is battling cancer. So my question is, what would you do if I told you that I had the cure to cancer? But you know what? I'm not giving it to you. I'm keeping it all to myself. What would you think about me? What would you think? I'm selfish. I'm a jerk. You know, you'd be throwing out Christian cuss words like Tim Hawkins gives us, right? <laughs> you, I mean, come on, right? If there is somebody that you love so much and they're struggling in life with a sickness and I have the cure for that sickness to, to cure every single person that is dealing with cancer or every single person that is going to deal with cancer, but I kept that cure to myself I'd be selfish. But one thing that we have to understand is that we have the cure for somebody who is sick in spirit. Somebody that does not have a relationship with God, we have the cure, and the name, his name is Jesus. God's will for your life is not attached to a certain vocation or a certain location. God's will for your life is simple, for you to know him, and for you to make him known through all of the world. You see, everybody here has passions. There, there's not a single pers person in here that probably isn't passionate about something, whether it's sports or, you know, starting a new business or doing this or doing that. Everybody in here has passions, whether it's hunting, fishing. There's, you know, there's so many different things that so many people can be passionate about. And one thing that we need to understand is that God is, God understands our passions. But if you say, God, I'm really passionate about maybe changing jobs and maybe going after a completely different career choice, God is saying, that, that's fine, but this is what I need you to do. I need you to make me known. Wherever it is that you go, however many jobs that you transfer through, however many people you talk with, your job as a Christian is to get people to know Christ. You know, everybody don't want to believe that God has called them to a, some sort of, of, of leadership. When the Great Commission, God looked at every single person and he says, I need you to go out and I need you to make disciples. God was entrusting you with the gospel of Jesus Christ to go out and make a difference for this world. That day when God commissioned people with the Great Commission, in that moment, God gave you power to have some sort of influence over someone's life. And so many people are watching us as Christians. I'm telling you, people are just waiting for you to make a mistake. They are waiting for you to mess up. They're waiting for you to say something wrong. They're waiting for you to come in and be so angry and bitter and as if we don't have bad days. I mean, I forget, you know, Christians, we don't have bad days. But so many people are looking at, at us, and they're just, they're hoping that we mess up. And it's sad that that's the world that we live in. But because this is what they want to do. They say, oh, I told you you wasn't real. I, I, I told you this isn't real. I told you that you were not the real deal. But we need to go out, and we need to make Jesus known. Let's look at Colossians chapter 3, looking at verse 17. Colossians 3, verse 17. And it says, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through us or through him. So whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we are supposed to do everything as if we are doing it unto the Lord. Nothing in our life is meant to please man. Everything in our life is meant to show glory back to God, to give glory back to God, to give honor back to God, the name that deserves all honor, praise, and glory. 
That is what he is calling us to do. Let's bounce over and, or over and let's go to Romans chapter 11, starting with verse 33. Romans 11, looking at verse 33. This is what we find. It says, oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay them? You see, God doesn't have to give us anything. He gave us everything that he had when he gave his son. So our job as believers, when we're going into this new year, we need to just stop and we need to think, God, how can I make you known to the world in the year of 2022? And the reason why I know so many Christians have failed at this this year is because of all the bickering that I have seen going on. I, at times, I can't tell Christians apart from those that have no relationship with God. I have seen unbelievers act more Christ-like than I have seen believers. And so I think we as a church, and not just CCA, but as the overall body of Christ, we need to evaluate our hearts. We need to search our hearts because however you finish a year is how you're going to start a year. So if you, if you finish a year with bitterness and anger and envy, that's how you're going to start your year. All of that is going to carry over. So it's important for the year of 2022 that we really evaluate our hearts. See, God, where was it in this past year that I made mistakes? Where was it maybe that I missed opportunities to make you known to somebody at work or a neighbor or somebody else that I know out in the community or a family member or a friend? When did I miss that opportunity? And God, how do I do better at that, do better at making you known in this new year? You see, everybody in here has a purpose, and your purpose is tied to a great God in heaven. Your purpose is tied to a great God in heaven. I want to go back and read Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 again. Colossians 1.16. It says, by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authority, all things were created through him and for him. So church, I ask you the simple question, what is God's will for your life? It is to know God and to make God known to the world. Can you go ahead and stand with me this morning? You know, we are in the final, final countdown of the year 2021. How many of you are excited about a new year? A fresh start. Anybody excited about that? Amen, Pastor Seth. Nothing's changed. But we are five days away from a new year. Five days away. I can't believe it. It feels like it was just January. I just, I just can't, I can't believe that the new year is almost here. But my encouragement and challenge to you is I want us to evaluate our lives these next five days. And when when the clock is is counting down, when we're in that last 60 seconds of this year, my challenge to you is to, if, if you feel that you can, make that vow with God. God, I'm going to make you known more this year than I did last year. I'm going to be looking for, I'm not just going to be waiting for them. I'm going to be looking for opportunities to make you known to the world. Because that is the greatest gift you can give anybody else in this world, is the gift of love and hope and grace in the name of Jesus. That is the greatest gift.